Hey, my name's Chris Landon. I'm visiting here from California. Hey, Chris. What, what, what's your name? My name's Richard. Richard Nisbet. 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 And I used to be from California. Used to be from California. Well, we're down here and uh, we're out at the ancient ruins and we read a, a book of yours, uh, uh, Cusco, Cusco Tales. Cusco Tales. And Good. some of that, some of that occur right here in this bar. Some of it, yes. So, uh, who, what, what kind of people come come into this bar? Oh, all kinds. Like uh, a couple of nights ago, there was a Frenchman sitting there, an Englishman sitting here, an American sitting here. That's what I like about this place. You meet people from all over the world. We're uh, 11,156 feet in, Something like that. in Patty's Bar. I think the highest, uh, highest Irish bar there is. Uh, Hi, highest Irish owned bar. Irish owned bar in yeah. the world, so yeah. that's that's all good. Well, how have you kept up your interest here in, in uh, Cusco? You... Mostly people. Uh huh. Mostly so... people, but you know, I read a lot about the history and uh, the architecture. And... Well, you've been very helpful for us, of course. We're, we're, this isn't the first time Good. First time we met, and so just uh, having somebody down here in Peru. Uh, we just, we've been in Pura, Peru, uh, working in a mission with uh, monastery-like conditions, and we really helped arrange our hotel. It's called uh, hot, hot Water. I, I kind of remembered it, and it got grit out of places. I didn't know I had places. Uh, we are in the desert to bring food packages out in Pura, right? right out there. So uh, what are the kinds of things, if someone wanted to come here, what kind of services uh, uh, could you offer them in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of tours or tours, in terms of yeah. accommodations? Well, tours, accommodations. Well, uh, we, got, we have accommodations that range in price from 10 souls a night, no hot water, to uh, 480 souls a night. Plenty of hot water. Plenty of hot water. Yeah, and great ambiance. But th this, there is... The thing that's fascinating about this area is, one thing, we're, we're sitting right in the center of what used to be the Inca Empire. That plaza out there was the very center of the Inca Empire. And um, people came from all over for religious reasons here. They still do, for Corpus Christi, for uh, uh, an event they call El Señor de los Temblores, which is when they bring the, this Christ figure out of the cathedral and parade him around the town. And uh, he stops earthquakes. He did at least once in 1640. And they, they parade him around now to try, he, he's preventive. Well, what, what are the best times of year to come down then? We picked ours around the availability for our yeah. what we were doing. You picked the worst time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I think flying into some rain and yeah, was, clouds. You and, guys were lucky. I mean, the weather here now, the last two days, has been the best we've had in two weeks. So if I were if I were from the United States. Yeah, if you wanted to come down here, you would want to come in, uh, like, November, December, October, July, June, July, August, March is good, April is great, May is good. So those are the times. We, we only have two seasons here. We have a rainy season, which you're right in the middle of. Thank you. And a dry season. I prefer right after the rainy season because everything is so green. It, it was noticed. just beautiful. We had a little bit of blue really sky today. Fun, and, yeah. So. But toward the end of the rainy season, everything is still bright green, and uh, you're not getting wet all the time. It's an excellent time. Well, we'll be. Uh, well, uh, where did where did we go today? We went to a place called Sacsayhuaman. Uh, we're going to be showing uh, uh, some footage out of there, Good. Uh, just to, so people have an understanding. It's not yeah. just meeting up in an Irish bar at 11,000 feet. Right. It's, there's some real, real well, this, things this here. This place is remarkable. Well, as you know, you saw it, and it's, it's got. It's, it's sometimes called the Stonehenge of Peru, and uh, it's it's a mystery how they built it. Nobody really knows, and certainly nobody can build it now. I don't know Blackwell. We couldn't 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 be duplicated. Duplicate. With, with all of our modern machinery, you couldn't duplicate. Then uh, tomorrow we're taking a trip up to Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. You've been very helpful. We were so far away. 
Uh, you've been very helpful in being able to go down to what's easier for you down to Indina travel and uh, make all the arrangements to the bus and the train and the guides and get everything back. Are there other uh, eco tour kind of things? Uh, yeah, there are eco tours that are headquartered mainly in the jungle area. Uh huh. So and I can arrange that too. It's just. It's not my area of expertise, but there are plenty of people who are experts. Just having someone at this end, our, our uh, uh, clerk at the uh, hotel was, uh, help, you can help arrange, there's a mystical route that people eat here, and I guess there's a hotel that specializes in, yeah. in people uh, eating the route, and they have enough bathrooms so people can throw up on a <laughs> regular basis, not feel comfortable, they're clean, and someone to guide them through all that. You're talking All that about uh, doing ayahuasca. Ayahuasca it is, uh, yes. Ayahuasca is an hallucinogenic mixture of herbs that's legal here. But, uh, so we've got, and then she said we've got islands of monkeys if you want them, crocodiles. I go, ayahuasca and crocodiles, that just doesn't seem like a good match. Yeah. Those are two separate trips. We don't want to do those yeah. at, the, yeah. at the same time. So. Well, I hope you're going to come back. Oh, yes, of course we're going to come back. Two days is not enough to do. Uh, we noticed that. We, we, you've got a lot of things on our belt, but uh -huh. you know, the vacation is the time to relax, too. Yeah. Well, Richard, thank you so much for yes. helping thank us out here, back. and we'll make sure everybody gets, uh, gets to know about what's available here in Cusco and Machu Picchu, and, and, uh, and hopefully read Cusco Tales. And uh, you have another website, too? I've got three websites. Well, we'll make sure that those are posted right under as we're, as we're talking away. Uh, we'll I've also got a, a, a small uh, clip on the Travel Channel, which explains a theory of mine about the connection between this area and Easter Island. Well, my understanding is that that, that person who had that theory met them at this bar or another bar, or just no, kind of developed theory. your theory and. I've never read it anywhere else, but it's really obvious. If you look at the Pacific Ocean floor, there's a ridge, underwater ridge that runs directly from the coast of Peru to Easter Island. And there's a lot of connections. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can't get that in there too. So Richard, okay. thanks again. Thank you, Chris. And Tura, it's time for you to get moving to Peru. Get here to Cusco. Say bye to Richard. And we'll see you later, Ventura. Some of these stones are brought from about 20 miles away. How, nobody knows. Or how they put them together, nobody knows. 
it's um, it's built like a fortress. You'll notice there are three tiers, and they're all zigzag, which means that anybody who attacks is going to have their flank exposed. So um, the only battle that is known to have taken place here was uh, the rebellion of uh, Puppet Inca, who was installed after the Spanish conquered uh, Peru. And that was by a Puppet Inca named Manco who was installed. He pulled together a, uh, a, a sizable force, and from here they set fire to Cusco. Cusco at that time had most of the roofs were thatch. And um, somehow the Spanish managed to break out, come around this side, and force their way in down here. One of the Pizarro brothers was killed in the battle. And they say that, that, that this whole field was littered with bodies after the battle. And that pretty much ended Manco's reign. Ma Manco, after that, he was staying in Calco, which is about an hour from here. And after that, he went on down to Ayantay Tambo. They came down and attacked him there. But before they attacked him, he headed for the jungle. Unfortunately, he, le he left his wife there. And uh, the Spanish got a hold of her, whipped her, shot her full of arrows, put her in a basket, and set her afloat on the Urubamba River, knowing that Manco would find his wife sooner or later, which he did. So I have some friends who recently divorced their wives who have that <laughs> feeling. Actually, Frank. Thank you. So this, so this was built before, way before the Incas. That's my opinion. And, and I, as I told them, I have two reasons for believing. And you can see that the higher tiers of stone are smaller. Those are the ones they took down in the Cusco to build with. They couldn't move them. And uh, also, And Richard, what is the God-given name of this place? Sacsayhuaman. Sacsayhuaman. Gracias. I don't know whether God gave it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure they have intermediate ones too. Just look longingly. This is where you can, you know, as I reflect upon my Incan ancestors. Big wave. Go wave like the queen. To the left. To the right. Very nice. Very nice.
Isn't it Copan, Richard? What? Where's Copan? Copan? In, in Honduras. Uh, another, another place, huh? Near the border of Guatemala in the mountains of Honduras. To call a Copan, and I forget which the other one is, where... Chichen Itza? Chichen Itza is not on the list of, one, of the better preserved and more important cities, actually. It just was big. Co Copan, we were talking yesterday, they, they, they built it out so that it's painted as it was in the Mayan times. You really got a feel for there's an active living place instead of a... They built an open air arche um, ar anthropological and archaeological museum. Some of the stella, a lot of the stone carvings and statues, and the whole center of it is they actually recreated what part of that looked like, and they painted it the way it would have been, and walked that. through it. Right that way. But it's an incredible, just incredible ruins. You want to be able to look at you? Yeah. Hmm. I haven't seen so far. The tunnel tour, we did the tunnel tour, it was like something out of Indiana Jones. <laughs> they found as the river diverted, there were these striae in this back, this back wall of the city, and no um, about every hundred we're years lost. it was rebuilt. And so when we were there, it was like 2003 or two, or... <laughs> And they have to climb down rocks, but the whole top of it, you can walk down. It's you know, pretty easy walking. Let's go this way. I like the old people. Oops. The tour guide. Oops.
what happens when he gets to the end of his rope. I'm standing on his rope, so you could probably get closer. I don't know how advisable this is. All right, he didn't want to be chased. A man on a mission. If I could walk with the llamas. So you just do the partial, then what's the partial seven?
We can say just theory, superstition, hypothesis. Nobody knows the truth about this place. We have all the information. How was probably the falling came there? What kind of activities they were doing? In this but once here, nobody was who tell us and said we were doing this kind of activities or they proposed the construction. But we can say that Machu Picchu was an experiment. With a theory, Machu Picchu was considered as a sanctuary, a religious place. For the people who were living here were just selected. Señorita Saudi. one place in the city. So probably they need to go there to collect the water. You know? mm. So later you will see that. They were carving really close at the foundation. Okay, please, let's go down. Tito, oh, mata casa. So that's the plumber. Closing the gates, maybe they were using the whole thing of the skin of the animals, or maybe they were using just wood. If they were using wood, maybe it was like this. You know this picture. Mm -hmm. Over the door, they were putting two pieces in a cross position, or like this, mm -hmm. tying with the whole bars and the hoop in the upper. Yeah, the chinchilla with a long tail. Okay. Maybe that's going to be too far away. Oh, I'm looking at them. I don't know. This is a big rabbit. A cooey. By the time they struggle it all, they have to put another new shore again and again, over and over. So it's going to be that in case the room gets warmer, 
In this area, we have prisons. They are with the same size, the same shape. We are going to visit this little girl inside this.